At approximately the same time, the behaviorist revolution was gathering strength in the United States. The Gestalt revolution was taking hold of German psychology. This was yet another protest against Vorotian psychology, further testimony to how important Vaughn's ideas were as a source of inspiration for new viewpoints and a basis for launching new systems of psychology. In its attack on the psychological establishment, Gestalt psychology focused primarily on the elementistic nature of Wundt's work. Recall the sensory elements were the foundation of Wundt's psychology. Gestalt psychologists made this the target of their operation. To understand the Gestalt protests, think back to what psychology was like in 1912. Although the Gestalt psychologist movement against Avant's position paralleled the rise of behaviorism in the United States, they were independent of one another. Gestalt psychologists referred to Vaughn's approach as they understood it as brick and mortar psychology. The Gestalt psychologists maintained that when century elements are combined, the elements form a new pattern or configuration. The word Gestalt can cause problems. Unlike functionalism or behaviorism, the term does not clearly denote what the movement stands for. Although it has no precise English language counterpart, although by now it has become part of everyday language of psychology, commonly used equivalents are form, shape, and configuration. In Gestalt psychology in 1929, Collier noted that the word was used in two ways in German. One usage denotes shape or form as a property of objects. In this case, Gestalt refers to general properties that can be expressed in such terms as angular and describes characteristics such as triangularity in geometric figures or tempos in a melody. The second usage denotes a whole or concrete entity that has as one of its attributes a specific shape or form. In this sense, the word may refer to triangles, let us say, rather than to the notion of triangularity. The Gestalt movement left an incredible imprint on psychology. Their work influenced work on perception, learning, thinking, personality, social psychology, cognitive neuroscience, and motivation. Unlike its chief competitor at the time, behaviorism, Gestalt psychology retained a separate identity. Its major tenets were not fully absorbed into mainstream psychological thought. It continued to foster interests in conscious experience as a legitimate problem for psychology during the years when behaviorism was dominant. The contemporary Gestalt position believed that conscious experience does occur and is a legitimate subject for study. They recognize, however, that it cannot be investigated with the same precision and objectivity as overt behavior. This approach to psychology is more widely accepted by European psychologists than it is in the United States, but its influence can be seen in the American humanistic psychology movement. Many aspects of contemporary cognitive psychology also owe its origins to Gestalt psychology.